Welcome to a quick video of a divorce log. We're going to talk about front splitters on a race car. Now on your typical sedan shaped car, you can always make more rear downforce very easily with a rear wing. Add a diffuser and you've got just an excessive rear downforce bias. It's really hard to make front downforce without a giant wing on a car. Uh, most of the series we run have very strict limits on, on how far out the splitter can go, how far back it can go, how wide it can be, things like that. For 99% of you watching this video, the easy button is to go to a manufacturer that makes a splitter for your car, like Nine Lives Racing. Just go buy their splitter. It's gonna save you thousands of dollars and a lot of hours and frustration uh, for a pre-made kit that fits most series. Most of those are gonna have a six inch extension forward, and that's pretty good. That, with some tunnels underneath, you can make some real downforce. On this NASA SD3 car, the rules allow a 12 inch extension from the forwardmost part of the car. And there's no splitter on the market that's made that big. So we made a splitter here. Now we used a piece of half inch or 12 millimeter uh, plywood, a birch, uh, furniture grade. It's not, not the typical junk you would find at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, and it's stiff enough. Uh, we've added structure on top. And a lot of questions we get are, well, how do I know what to do? Um, yeah, if you can make it out of a piece of carbon fiber, great. That's going to cost you thousands and it's going to be fragile and explode. This is a $50 piece of plywood. So if it does get wrecked, it's easy to reproduce. And we'll make a template for this customer just for that very reason. Um, we, in the past, we made aluminum splitters out of 3 16 60 61, which is really strong and really durable. The aluminum material is very expensive and it does get bent. Uh, this car had the same splitter knocked off three times and we always were able to put it back on. Um, but the third time it bent it pretty badly and we couldn't reuse it. We also learned a lot. That was a splitter we built 12 years ago and we weren't using tunnels then. We weren't maximizing the forward extension. And we found with testing on some other cars that the more forward extension we get, the more downforce we can make. And we can kind of feel that in aero balance, more front downforce and in lap times. Uh, hood venting makes a small difference. Uh, the tunnels make a pretty big difference, but size matters. This one goes back to the front axle center line, which is typically the kind of the maximum rearward extension. It goes forward the full 12 inches. It's actually 14 inches from here, but 12 inches from this point. And we can go as much as six inches wider, but that starts becoming a challenge in a wheel to wheel car when you're trying to make a pass or you're trying to use some curbing. So we, we kept it to the width of the tires. The adding stiffness is the tricky part. And we have a lot of ways of doing that. There's several engineers here, a lot of people, a lot of racing experience, but sometimes it comes down to feel. We go out and we see if we can flex the, the splitter plane and see where it's weak. We added a lot of um, side to side structure with a piece of one by one aluminum architectural tubing we've bought at a hardware store. And that helps more than you think. Uh, for and aft, there's a lot of bowing we've seen. You can see it when the main splitter itself starts to bow at high speeds. We got pictures I'll show here of Trigger where we were getting a lot of bowing. It was bowing about two inches and it was scraping the ground in the middle and that's not good. You know, ideally if you could make a flexible splitter that did that, but that's not really practical and it was starting to damage the splitter. So we added some inch and a half by eighth inch uh, wall thickness um, aluminum angle for aft. And so we have all these different tricks we do and actually the placement of these front splitter struts. We had them pretty far forward earlier. Uh, Brad just filled these in with some putty. We moved them back three inches and made this whole section much stiffer. So it, you know, the, the exposed splitter struts, a lot of people hate them, but they do add a ton of stiffness and that's how we attach the front of our splitters. Uh, some people will use mounts behind the bumper cover and that's really nice and you don't have to use these exposed splitter struts and they make these with some door latches and they're you know, quick release, that's cool. But as the splitter extension starts getting further and further out, the, the stiffness just goes away and those mounts aren't practical. You have to use these external struts. We make these pretty easy, uh, professional awesome, and they're pins you push out with these little cotter pins and they come off quickly. So this splitter, it mounts with two bolts and four quick release pins and the, the back just slides in. So, it's fairly easy to remove. We'll probably encourage the customer to take this off uh, to load in this trailer. One other important aspect to note is the rear mounting. Uh, we've done this several ways in the past. We bolted these on, we've tried the quick releases, and this is, seems to be our easiest solution. Uh, we make this bracket and it bolts to the subframe and this slides in and there's a couple inch overlap. 
So the splitter actually slides in and goes back even further and uh, really good attachment that way and just makes it really easy to get it in and out. On this particular splitter, we use a professional awesome large splitter tunnels or ramps and these can generate a good bit of downforce. They're quite large and we have them aimed to point at our brake deflectors that will push air through the rotors for cooling. So we get a, a secondary benefit from that. Brad built some structure here and some structure forward because this side was fairly flexible and we've got one bolt you have to pull out. So this is, is really rigid and stiff, but without this structure, it was really wobbly and floppy. And this whole bumper cover was pretty floppy. We've got some gaps here at the front and this was kind of damaged. We're gonna kind of heat that up. We don't mean for this to be airtight because you can adjust the height by extending and, and shortening these uh, professional awesome splitter struts. So we'll have an air dam that comes up here to cover that gap. So this is the structural piece we added that kind of also acts as an air dam. It's pretty rigid and stiff. It's made of this one inch square tubing. But without anything, any of the structures bolted on, this whole thing is very, very flexible, especially in this plane here and, and, and laterally. This is a splitter off of our Mustang we call Trigger, and it has some of the same structure. It's got the one by one aluminum uh, tubing there. It gives a lot of stiffness this way because we have to cut out the plywood for these professional awesome ramps. It takes a lot of structure out along this plane and this plane. And then fore aft, we have this inch and a half aluminum uh, structure there. So that really stiffens things up. And we have some structure out here on the ends that we bolt to the bumper cover just like Brad has done on this one here. This is some ABS plastic we use again as a kind of an air dam and it kind of bridges the gap between the splitter plane and the bottom of the car and it gives us some adjustment up and down there as well. As we've been posting about this particular splitter this week online people have asked about this little air dam section right here. It's about a three inch tall piece of ABS plastic that covers the gap between our aluminum structural pit member and the factory lower lip. I'll show a picture of that here. Um, we used a, a one continuous piece. Uh, Brad used a heat gun and pushed it into these strange contours here so that it lined up. We just want to cover that air gap. I went and bought this four by eight sheet of textured ABS. It's smooth on one side, textured on the other. Eighth inch thick. It was about 75 bucks for this whole sheet and we used just a tiny sliver along the top. We could make a whole lot of air dams out of this. All right, thanks for watching our little short video showing some of the aspects of how we build a splitter. There's a million ways to do this and not everybody needs a custom one-off splitter like this. As I said before, there are pre-built solutions from numerous suppliers. Uh, we send a lot of people to Nine Lives Racing. They have a splitter for this chassis you can just bolt on. It's not gonna be as big as this. It's not gonna have the professional awesome tunnels, but it'll probably be 90% as good for a quarter of the cost. This is a dedicated race car we've worked on for more than 11 years and we wanted to give this particular customer a little bit more front down force to go with the big uh, AJ Hartman wing he has on the back. So thanks for watching and tune in next time for more Warslog videos.